Greetings, viewers. This is mainly going to be listening this time around in this video because those of you who follow me on Twitch, who watch my Twitch content, know I've been playing through Hollow Knight. And I was baffled by a great amount of the lore. I really like the game. I think I understand, but I thought I needed an expert because I went online and tried to see some things that would explain the lore, and they're either way super too complex or they're really, really long and go off on tangents I really don't care about. So I am here with an expert on Hollow Knight who is going to take us through <clears> it <throat> about hopefully 20 to 30 minutes. So Cloudcraft, I'm going to introduce you now. Cloudcraft, he's not using his real name because this isn't work stuff. This is fun stuff. But he's a game designer and he knows a lot about Hollow Knight. So Cloudcraft, where do you want to begin? Because it's like, you start the game in a part, but there's all this like backstory in the game of what happened to, you know, the town of Hallow Nest before the main character starts. So where do you want to begin? Okay, first I'm going to begin with the disclaimer. I am not an expert You're on the lore of Hollow Knight. You're more than an expert than me. I, so. Yes, more than you, but um, I have not memorized every single bit of the lore. I know most of it pretty well. I know the really big stuff very well. I don't know everything, and a lot of this is based on um, a combination of inference and supposition and filling in gaps we don't have concrete information for from the fan base. Yeah, there's so a lot of stuff some that of is what I tell very you, inferred. Yeah, some of what I tell you won't be accurate. Some of it will just be the best we can figure out, but there is a lot of stuff you can deduce if you have all the pieces. Right. And that's one of the things I found about the stuff online is they, they claim as fact things that are not. They're inferred. Um, I'm sure they yes. think it, it totally makes sense, but there's a bunch of different ways to deal with some of it. So what's the stuff that is known for sure? There's a okay. place called Hallow Nest. Now what? Okay, so uh, actually to start off, um, how well do you understand the metaphysics of Hollow Knight? <laughs> <laughs> with, with the, well, I've made a lot of jokes about it on Twitch with the, um, I understand that uh, there was basically insects who think like people. So we start with anthropomorphized insects. We've already hit Kafka territory. But the moths, the lady who gives you the dream nail, they worshipped a being called the Radiance. Then there's another, I don't know what, called Un. Then there's a worm who became the king. Am I right so far? Yes. Okay. Uh, so that's not so much metaphysics as plot. If you'd like, I can very quickly sum sum up the plot in under a minute. Yes, let's so, go there. So the core plot of Hollow Knight, which all takes place before you ever get there, right. is basically this. So at first there was a world of darkness. And then the Radiance, the moth god, comes along and she's like, screw you, darkness, I'm a light. And I have all my little moth friends around me now. And then the Pale King comes along and he's like, screw you, Radiance, I'm giving out free lights to everybody and now your moth friends are my moth friends. And then the Radiance was quiet for a bit as they kind of just played without her. But then she came back and went, surprise, I'm a bug zapper now. So then the Pale King decided to put a lampshade on her. But then she's like, you know I'm going to burn through this eventually. And then the Pale King ran to his room with his buzzsaw collection and walked himself away. And that's where the game starts. And that's all 100% accurate, but described hysterically. So... Okay, so the metaphysics. So there, the metaphysics. There are, there are themes of definitely sort of duty that are definitely in it. How does that tie into the metaphysics you're talking okay. about? Okay, so the metaphysics I'm talking about are the nature of certain elements within the game. I'm talking dreams and essence. I'm talking soul and void. Okay. Those are the main ones that you want to understand because otherwise a lot of the plot stuff only partially makes sense. But we've also got infection that ties into the dreaming, right? Sorry, we've got what that ties into In the, the infection. 
Yes. The we, orange we will get that to hits that. everybody. We okay. will get to that. But first, I want you to understand. So dreams are basically a metaphysical, like, plane separate from reality, but that is, like, it's not just like the internals of someone it's more than that that's a collective dreamscape yes yeah there's a collective dreamscape and then there's like individual dreams within that dreamscape that multiple people can participate in right and, and that that has to deal not just with like actual dreaming but also with like conscious thought and will and death and it's kind of vaguely defined like what actually creates dreams like all the different things that can but anything that has to do with consciousness or or with will probably has something to do with making dreams yeah and i thought that was an interesting part of a game featuring bugs because one of the big questions with say ants is wow they don't have very developed brains how do they do all that complex stuff oh we, we will get to that yeah and so the idea of sort of a collective consciousness for lack of a better term, was I thought something that yes. was really interesting. Yeah, we will get to that very shortly. Right. So, yeah, so, like, when you use a dream nail to, like, read the thoughts of, of something and you can do it to things they're dead or to even go into their dreams and they're dead, that's because their, like, essence that, and essence is the stuff that makes up dreams, right. can linger even when they're dead. So they have no soul when they're dead, but they do still have essence. Yes. Okay. So soul is not anything like what soul normally is in normal conception. Soul is just a, a physical element. Right. It, it's just what makes up the bodies of the, uh, of the various bugs. Right. That's all it is. And um, the thing about soul is that while it's normally like hard and a shell, um, when you damage the body, you can extract it and it becomes this white goop, which you can use to make spells out of. Right. Which so makes complete sense, but it's a video game, so we don't question it. Yeah. But basically spell, that kind of spell is basically necromancy. It's just right. white instead of black. Yeah. And then there's kind of this question of what death actually is in the game, but you don't really touch that unless you like go mostly completionist and get all the charms and do all the things. Yeah, things can die without totally dying and right. can often die and leave behind something of their own will. Right. The, um, the, the thing I think's cool yeah. about the game is it works on a very literal level, which is, all right, fine, you work through, you defeat final boss that turns out to be final boss. There's a hidden final boss. Awesome. Yay. Good ending. Um, but then there's all this stuff under the hood that you, it, it's interesting because it's a game series that you pick up the rock and watch all the crawly bits underneath, literally and figuratively, in this game. So what's going on? I know we're getting to the realm of speculation now. What's going on with the themes of the game? Because the thing I find very interesting is the fact that you're playing as a void character, essentially. You are basically a Kintano container with some shadow stuff in it that in part is called regret what's so, going on there so okay the regret thing is actually we'll get to that but that's right. not actually got anything to do with what a uh, void is okay this that, is the part where i start to get confused because there are a lot of characters named like mistakes and they refer to the the what is it now? gg refers to your shadow as your regrets so what's going on with the main character here as my oh, phone rings? Okay, up so this is, this is, so one little caveat here. Don't look too deeply into the themes because this game was not made, the war was not made with specific themes in mind necessarily. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the game design, most of the game design happened before any of the war became a thing. So this is a game that was designed mechanics first, and then they created a story that explained the mechanics. Yes. That's very, that, those are the games I tend to prefer. Yeah. That's and a very it's, interesting it's bit of background. It's very interesting because of how well lore-wise the, wor the world is like integrated. I'm sure they made some changes to their level design after the fact. 
to work with lore but and uh, that explains why that explains why i find that the lore kind of falls apart with god home the dlc it's sort of like there's all this cool really intense stuff and then ah, i don't think so, about it too hard it's just arena battles the thing about god home is it doesn't actually fall apart but it's it's another huge layer of complication yeah 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 we'll, they, we'll 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 dip into some stuff you can learn from god home but we won't address god home that heavily right so the what is the deal with okay. the relationship between the void or the main character and the radiance okay so first you gotta understand v what void is so void is it's referred to as empty quite a bit, mm -hmm. but I'm not entirely sure what the emptiness it's referring to is. It could be conscious thought, but at the same time, Void, uh, while it's not got any specific pattern to it, it generally uh, possesses will of some kind, and that will can change uh, quite malleably. Well, that would imply that void is independent thought because the brightness, the light, is collective thought. Uh, that's not entirely accurate. There's more than one case of independent thought and more than one case of collective thought. Okay. Um, Again, but, this is why you don't try to read too much into it. Yeah. Right. But, but what you got to understand about void is... It definitely has a beef with the Radiance. It might have a beef with other godlike beings. I'm not sure on that one. But what it definitely does is it's got a tendency to stick to and subsume soul. Like, okay. it, it's got this tendency to, like, stick to things that have soul. And with normal bugs, it kind of just seeps into them and kills them. But it can also alter its function based on the soul that it's, like, sticking to. Hence like, the power-ups getting their, like, powered-up form becoming void instead of soul. Yeah. And okay. I just got a phone call I don't care about. <laughs> that makes two of us. Okay. So... What is, is the Pale King connected to Void or are these two different things going uh, on in the game? So basically the Pale King, the right. Radiance, the White Lady, Un, right. Grim, and the Nightmare Heart, and I think there may be one or two others I'm missing in there, are all, I'm going to call them higher beings, but they're basically gods. Is the Hive Queen also in that uh, category? Because she seems to know a lot. Possibly. Right. Not sure on that one. Okay. Um, I actually suspect not, but I'm not sure. Okay. And then you've um, got the three dreamers as well. Okay. Yeah. We'll get right. to the dreamers. The right. dreamers will come a little bit later. So basically with the higher beings and a uh, note here in God home, they refer to a whole bunch of things as gods, but only the God seekers refer to anything that counts as a boss as a god okay Ev for everyone else's sake like these only the ones i listed and a few others are actual actually the gods i'm talking about okay so these aren't the you gods you're looking for yeah. star wars style yeah when you when you see a thing by the way that says for higher beings it's basically talking about the gods and their offspring okay so those are the the little stones yeah. with messages on them littered well, throughout the game well the ones that say for higher beings these were right were right there for right you. right um so basically the, the gods basically not necessarily their children but the gods basically only have two features that i can identify that are universal to okay. them okay one is they all have significant power in dreams okay and the other is that they all uh in some way or other seek to have followers okay that makes sense and why is not necessarily spelled out but uh god home gives a clue in that um if you get to the end of god home you you find that a whole bunch of beings dreaming about the same thing can make that thing a lot more powerful which is which is true <laughs> yeah. objectively that we where power of ideas comes from is how many people believe in them. But that power n not only manifests in the dream realm, it can manifest physically. Right. Right. So that so, may be why they seek followers. It's right. not clear. And it may be that if they have no followers, they basically can't do anything. Or at least in the Radiance's case, that may be true. Well, that kind of makes sense. They're bugs. 
<laughs> yeah. This is so, bug logic, bug life. So, so you throughout the game, there's this reference to ABBA, A-B-A. Okay, uh, don't overthink that. I'm pretty sure that's just a replacement for a common bridge word in English. Okay, so it's sort of, um, it's almost like a swap cipher kind of thing? Yeah, I, I suspect the uh, war tablets in the teacher's archives right. are, are uh, a combination of gibberish noise when, when it's not an actual word and swapping, it, swapping out for some other word. Like when you see O with a little, uh, is it, I forget what it's called, the apostrophe or something. Yeah. Like in, at the end of it, that I'm pretty sure is one of those things that's swapping for something else. Okay. So I, am, I, I cannot be proven wrong when my headcanon is just that bugs really like listening to Dancing Queen and Fernando. No, you can't. Yeah, because that was a goofy little thing I did in my head, which I am just joking. Obviously, I it, do not think is real. It's possible Monomon really likes Saba, though. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so getting down to the void, you've got your main character who, yes. is it correct to say is a Hollow Knight? if not the Hollow so, Knight, except for the end? So it's correct to say the main character is Hollow. Right. While, while the fandom refers to the main character as, quote, the knight, as opposed right. to the Hollow Knight. The Hollow Knight. Knight, right. There's no evidence it's actually a knight in okay. any way. But it is definitely Hollow. Right. Right. Um, the Hollow Knight, though, might not be entirely Hollow. And that's part of why it didn't work. Okay, because that's, you never quite find out for sure what the deal is with that character. It's inferred through the Hollow Knight's gestures. The Hollow Knight, for people who uh, aren't sure who we're talking about, is the second to last boss. It's the first boss you think means you win the game, but no, the radiance is behind the Hollow Knight. You have to do certain things to, to get that. So the Hollow Knight keeps trying to basically commit seppuku during the fight and the the infection the orange goo is coming out of him is that what you mean about not being totally hollow uh no no he is infected because he is not totally hollow right the not totally hollow thing came before he got infected okay basically he needed to be hollow so he wouldn't get infected okay um and I'll, I'll kind of try to explain that. Like, I think it's not ever spelled out, but the current best fan theory right. is that basically the king established some sort of actual relationship with the Hollow Knight, which caused him to have, you know, feelings and some sort of mind, or that he just had a mind from his inception. Okay. And that because of that, he wasn't hollow anymore. And the infection, which is the radiance, now that he's got a mind, can take him over. Okay, so the the knight, the main character. Uh, I, it's funny, I never saw him as a knight. It was always just a little guy. Um, he isn't infected, but nope. he does release infection. Uh, what? In, there's one part where you basically release the infection into the Forgotten Crossroads. Uh, well, that, that infection is coming from the Hollow Knight. Okay, you, so you, I didn't you've do released that. released it? Yeah, no. Well, you did that in that you, you killed one of the things that was sealing it. So oh, I, okay. I think I should step back and very quickly go through the silly uh, history that I gave you before, but what it actually is. Right. It, because it won't take long. In terms of mechanics, in terms of objectives, you need to find and defeat three dreamers to open up the, what is it, the Black Egg Temple? Yes. To access the Hollow Knight. And one of those dreamers turns out to be Hornet's mother. Yes. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to step back and basically give you a brief history of the world that led up to this. Okay. Um, so basically... First civilization in Hollow Nest we know of. When, when yes. the lore tablets say that, uh, I'm calling it Hollow Nest, by the way, but that's just what, was, what the kingdom of the Pale King was called. But that's the only name we have for this region. 
Right. So first civilization was a civil that we know of was a civilization that worshipped void. Okay. In some fashion. We don't know a lot about them. Also, at some point there were giant, like super giant bugs, but we know <laughs> basically nothing about them. Oh, yes. Uh, um, oh, yeah. So, the, the references to the, the, the massive things you encounter yeah. throughout the game. So, so um, that civilization, um, we know it faded out and that might have had an enemy, probably the Radiance, um, that killed it. And we also know they had a lot of, they were really good at manipulating Void and Soul. Like, they made the black eggs, which are probably made of Void. Right. And that's why they have a will. Right. Um, they may have made Black Egg Temple, but I'm not sure on that one. Um, and they also made all the soul totems. Okay. The, those things the you things hit. The things you hit to you get soul. soul. Right. Um, so... Then the other thing we know about is the Radiance. And the Radiance, when she first showed up, and we don't know where gods come from. Right. Um, but basically, she was living on top of Crystal Peak with all of her moth followers that she created. And she was on top of Crystal Peak because Crystal Peak is full of crystals which focus into amplify light. Right. Hence... The enemy being able light. to do that, and there being a big statue of her yeah. on the top of Crystal Peak. Yeah, okay. and so she's up there hanging out, and at some point, um, either before or after the Radiance being there, there are other groups that move in or, or rise up. Some of them are higher beings, like Un. Right. Un and all of the things in Green Path that Un made. Um, and some of them aren't higher beings, like the mantises and the weavers. But right. the mantises and the weavers, you'll notice all the really scary bugs tend to be the ones that have higher thought without having a higher being involved. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, or huh. maybe it's predators. Right. Well, could be the same thing, right? Yeah. They tend to be more independently minded yeah, that, insects. Spiders, that's, mantises. That's why I yeah. say the bees may or may not have a higher being as their queen, because they definitely have a hive mind. Right. But like don't know if the queen was actually a higher being. Right. Um so the, there's a bunch of groups living here. So then the this worm comes along like on the edge of it, and this worm dies and produces the pale king, which which just say the pale king is the worm maybe he's slightly different from the worm but he's basically the worm right and um so rather so the radiance basically as far as i can tell had a hive mind with her moths um un un's followers uh like shared un's dream but seemed to have had at least some consciousness okay pale king does rather than making his own followers he comes along and he starts giving bugs intelligence so that they'll become his followers. Right. Um, and he basically stole all of the Radiance's moths. I don't know if there was any direct conflict there or if it was just a very quick thing. Well, he was also offering superior technology and all that oh, stuff. I'm not sure he was. That, oh. Those may have been inventions of, of the bugs beneath him later on. That he just took credit there, for. There. Well, I don't know if he did take credit for the inventions. Oh, because my understanding is they were building, like, the cable cars on the Order of the King. Well, I'm sure they were built on the Order of the King. That doesn't necessarily mean that he's the one who invented them. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, because we have characters like Monomon, who definitely did not need the King to be really smart. So right. that's the thing. The king and then can there's make the, the nail... Um, the Nail Masters, which is a hilarious name, but yeah, that's what they're, they're yeah. not really that involved in the war. I, I'm guessing they like started training after the fall. Yeah, I just got a sense that they were kind of fun characters that threw another sort of quest in there for enjoyment. Yeah. They weren't really tied in too much. Yeah, like also as far as like actual chronology, like we don't really know times on any of this. We know sequences of events and cause effect. Yeah, I mean, again, I think because it's so uh, based on r really quite ancient myth structure, none of that's ever clear in, in Norse or you know, Babylonian or Assyrian myth or anything like that because it, it evolves through oral storytelling, yeah. which I thought so that was a cool part of the game. 
So to finish up here, so other than with the Radiance, the Pale King seems to have been mostly pretty chill with other uh, gods. Right. How, however, he his kingdom was imperial power. So like right. one of the reasons I said that those like that tech may have been invented later is to start off, there was a path going from for forgotten crossroads through uh through green path to yes. get to the city and then later on they have direct elevators and they have stagways yeah it definitely seems yeah. like the more technological stuff is sort of bored through pre-existing levels but, but yeah so th this was an imperial power so it was taking from a lot of the outlying regions and while it wasn't necessarily in direct conflict with Un, right uh i got the sense that that there was tension there because basically while they had a road through green path it was like hey buddy you step off this path yeah. path the yeah. white king has no say once you're off this path. interesting okay interesting yeah. so it was like a safe and, passage route and also because the white lady there's a warning from uns people for other uns people to basically say hey the white lady is basically there to draw you away from un yeah, there's warnings all over that area of, you know, the path of the followers of the king and all that stuff. And that's never totally explained. So it's like that, yeah. that it's got that so relic feeling. I, I think there was tension between, between those groups. And like other groups, like the Mantises, they fought with for a while and then reached a treaty for them to uh, hold, hold the way against Deep Nest. Right. Meanwhile, you've got the Weavers in Deep Nest and... Uh, Hollow Nest at one point tried to settle in Deep Nest, probably a ways into its duration. And it and, went uh, very, very badly. It, went, it seems to have proceeded for a little while, and maybe the Weavers just hadn't taken notice yeah. until then. And then they just got wrecked. That's Though what not, I took from it. Not by the Weavers. I'm wondering if the Weavers might have had some way to control the other bugs in Deep Nest. There's certainly a sense of that, like they're fighting against some sort of control somehow in Deep Nest. They seem to be fighting off like, when they appear and stuff like that. Uh, when who appears? In, in Deep Nest. Do you know those spiders that only appear from behind? They look more like oh, they're flailing yeah. than they're crawling. Oh, those ones, those ones. Yeah, those are, uh, I believe, younger weavers. Oh, oh, okay. oh no what what's no, going the, on the, there the is they're they're the moving order. on invisible threads that's what's going on oh okay now we have the dreamers and we have one of the dreamers is that Hera who um, has a relationship with the pale king so yeah so Hera is the queen of the weavers and for some reason a lot of lore videos don't pick up on this and think she's separate from the weavers but there's far too much evidence that she is the queen of the weavers Mostly through Hornet. I guess it's because you don't. Lo she's not the one you locate in Deep Nest. Well, Hera is the one you locate in Deep. Nest. Oh, it is. I thought yeah. she was the yeah, one in the the uh, library. No. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, finish up. So basically, goes on for a while. Hi Pale King might have attracted multiple other higher beings in. Cause, okay. Because the White Lady is uh, the queen. Right. Um, so at some point, probably from bugs mining in Crystal Peak and finding the Radiance statue, right? the Radiance gets remembered and then she starts coming back and she's like, I am pissed off and I'm going to kill everyone. Re reasonable um, thought, all things considered. Yeah. And it's possible that unlike other higher beings, she is only a dream being. Yeah. It's the only time you really see her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we don't know if she's ever had physical form. Well, okay. a form in the physical world. Right. Um, but so, yeah, she starts taking over basically anything with a mind that isn't immune. Right. And having them attack other things and destroy themselves and all of that. And you okay. can, that's the infection. It manifests physically in this orange goop. Okay. So almost all the enemies who fight are infected. Right. Yes. Um, yeah, except for rare things like the mantis. So then the, the plan to deal with this is like the whole complicated thing with the dreamers. Right. So basically the plan goes, we're going to make a vessel capable of containing the radiance. How they made it contain the radiance, I don't know. 
Okay. Um, but it has something to do with the ability. Oh, actually, I think I do know because you. So basically, the the king and the white lady make a bunch of eggs together, right? And then they throw them into the abyss and right. let, let the uh, let the void infect them. And right. before this, they were experimenting with other ways of doing this. That's that may be what the collector is, but I think in order to make it keep its form and be able to like take in the radiance, right. they needed a shell to shape its function. Yeah. And there may have also been spells involved because um, we'll get to this in a sec, but the weavers are capable of making spells that aren't your typical soul spells. Right. Um, so basically they, now I'm not sure if there was any criteria for judging whether the vessel was truly hollow other than it reaching the top of the abyss. Right. Yeah, again, which what, is that whole what climbing counts as thing hollow you have to do is again a little, and again. is a little vague. And right. also like like your character is more hollow because they've been out into like beyond the kingdom where the pale kings like make everyone smarter influence doesn't right. reach. But, but I, I actually I actually got the sense too that even they didn't really know what they were doing. It was sort of a it, plan born of desperation. It's quite possible. Yeah. Um but uh so then the idea is contain contain the radiance in that vessel. Right. Then bind it with chains with a seal of binding on them. And that seal of the seal of binding is like a special spell made from thread that gets used to protect things or seal things away. They're really, really important. Right. Um, and then you seal then that in the black you, egg. Yeah, you put it in the black egg, which is made entirely a void because it vanishes once, once you defeat the radiance. Right. Um, and then the, the entrance to the black egg gets sealed with three dreamers. Um, who are basically guys that like lock themselves in internal like dream existence yeah. in order to just exert energy to keep that thing closed. Yeah, to and give it they, some sort of shape. Yeah, they clearly couldn't just be normal bugs because you have Monomon the teacher who is probably the smartest in the entire kingdom and right. I think may have come from outside it and seems to have been involved in actually making the whole plan. Oh, that was the dreamer in the library. Yes. Okay, I got them mixed up. Yeah. Okay. So then then you have Lurie in the Watcher, who I think wasn't just like s higher nobility or something, but was like involved directly in law enforcement or something because of the Watcher Knights and the fact that he's spying on the whole city. Yeah, that's one of the best sort of buildups where you go up that elevator and there's all the, the, the knights watching. Like, I don't know if their statues are actual people, but they're watching yeah. the elevator go up. That's a very breathtaking part of the game. Oh, yeah. No, the, those are statues of him with his mask on. That's the thing, is the dreamers are all wearing masks. Yeah. And we find out, we can find out from the mask maker in Deep Nest that when you wear a mask, it can actually alter your nature. Oh, and those, that's right. I remember that bit of dialogue. And, yeah. Yeah. Those masks, and especially the like capes around them, look awfully similar to what you see from a lot of uh, like from the Pale King and his spawn. Yes. So that may have something to do with why they're wearing them. Right. And Monoman was basically studying soul, right? Um. There's all these references to so it she, in the library. She. All of those lore tablets are basically describing this plan I'm describing right okay, now. Okay, okay. And it's possible the uh, jellyfish floating around were basically a prototype of can we contain the infection in something and have it not, like, lash out. That's interesting because the jellyfish are sort of out of place in the game. Yeah and, yeah, and the big ones aren't dangerous until you hit them. Right, and then they're very dangerous. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, um, final one. So, Hera the Beast, obviously, Pale King and Weaver's not on good terms. Although right. they, that changes either just after or just before this. Um, but basically, he makes a deal with Hera. So, Hera may be a queen, but she's not a higher being. Right. So, basically, they make a deal. The king gets his third dreamer, and Hera and the Weavers get a princess who's half god. Okay. And now, that's Hornet. Is, is, is Hera Hornet's mother? Because yes. some, yes. this is the, th this is one of the things I wanted to ask you because some 
sites say that um, Hornet's mother is the white lady and Hera just made the deal to turn over the child, almost okay. like a Rumpelstiltskin type thing. Okay, so Hornet may have at least in part been raised by the white lady, Okay, but Hera is Hornet's biological mother. Because when the white lady talks about um, the the Pale King's dalliance as bargain, he's yes. talking about the Pale King Gan and on with Hera. That's what I thought, which is why I was sort of surprised to see some of those things and wanted to clear that up. Because it's like, did I, did I just have a dirty mind and read too much into that? Yeah. Yeah. Also, so o- almost everyone involved in this plan did not like it, by yeah, the way. Because they didn't like each other. No, no, because they didn't like the plan. Oh. They, they didn't like that they had to, like, say, throw thousands of offspring into the void and let them be consumed. Yeah, this, this is what I think is interesting about uh, the upcoming sequel starring Hornet, because the, the, the main character, I got the sense, is just one adventurer of many, right? Um, Hornet's special. Yeah, because... And- so your main character is a combination of God and Void. Hornet is a combination of the queen of one of the most powerful and unique species in the universe yeah. and a god. Yes. Yeah. Like, Hornet's got a real specialness about it. You could tell the developers really, really loved Hornet. It's just oh, one yes. of those characters that has, like, an extra level of shiny to her. They took extra care because they really, really liked her. And... I'm wondering what that means for the sequel. Because it's going to take place outside of Hollow Nest, they said, correct? Yes, in Farloom. Right. So and she's... it may be a sequel or a prequel. We a don't prequel. Know. I, which... I'm guessing sequel, but we don't know. Yeah, well, it could be both, right? I, I would prefer it be a sequel just because I'd like to see it be a new adventure that's not tied in. But they definitely spent a lot of time on that character. I guess, I guess part of it was leading up to the big reveal that she was like the forbidden child. She's like the Bayonetta of, of Hallow Nest. She was like a forbidden union type Fair thing. enough. Yeah. But w- what do you think that means for the sequel? That all of a sudden the identity of the playable character is, is profoundly different in that regard. Do you think it's just going to be whole new lore because it's a whole new place? Uh, there... It's going, we know it's going to build on at least some of the existing war. Okay. Because Farloom, as you might have guessed, there's a lot of silken threads going on. Right. It's probably where the weavers come from. And there's also a few minor characters who definitely came from Farloom. Okay. One you wouldn't see because you can only get him on Steel Soul mode, which is Steel Soul Jin. Okay. He is 100% from Farloom just okay. by visuals. Okay. So they're going to have a bit of a challenge because one of the cool things about Hollow Knight is sort of discovering the lore. Yeah. They're going to have to have enough new that you get that feeling again. Well, I, I suspect they will because yeah. there, there's already indications that there's a lot of mystery around Farloom that's separate from the mystery in Hallow Nest. Yeah, they have, they have their own shit, which is yeah. probably there, why they were There are trying. bells everywhere, and we have no idea why. That, okay, that's, that's the last thing I wanted to ask you about, so we keep to time. The stag, or the stag story seems unfinished. It seemed to be sort of leading up to something that never got included in the game. Uh, yeah, it seems unfinished. Yeah, like there was this whole thing about a <laughs> child possibly existing and they kind of leave it hanging? Now, uh, I guess well, I, I think the idea was that there might be other stags still out there somewhere. And yeah, that's it. that was the implication, but you find the stag nest and it's empty. And it's like, oh, this is kind of a letdown. Yeah, well, they've sp- probably abandoned it. Right, right. But, but yeah, it, it, it felt like it could have gone a little bit farther than it went. Well, maybe oh, that's something um, we'll pick up. So an, another little note on uh, Hornet and stuff. So uh, something you see in God Home. So you can get Dream Nail dialogue off bosses and enemies, and everybody in God Home has new Dream Nail dialogue, and most of them aren't aware that they're in the God Home dream. Basically, what they're doing with the God Home thing is they're, they're using the God tumor to, Tuner to draw things into 
their their dream that wouldn't normally be there yeah, they're so that they can dream, dream about them and focus right. them and get to like the highest god which they're going for the radiance but uh if you complete it then you end up being that thing um, oh that's cool yeah and it's con they confirm by the way that the like remnants of the pale king are what drew them to hollow nest so that's why I said the Pale King might have drawn in other higher beings. Yeah, that was an interesting thing that they just kind of have his body there. <laughs> it was morbid. Yeah. So, yeah. so he's probably dead. Probably. Right. So it, uh, is, it is sort of appropriate for the character that there's this whole vast civilization. It's like he's not, he's not around anymore, but his dreams are living on. Yeah. yeah. But uh, what I was going to say is when you fight certain bosses that are higher beings they're they're actually um lucid in in the dream and know that they've been drawn into this dream so hornet is partially lucid mm -hmm. of the fact that she's in a dream uh when you fight grim not only is he fully lucid instead of bowing to you he bows to the god seeker oh that's interesting a and he's like yeah sure i'll participate in your little thing here let's do this no. that's basically his dream nail dialogue grim is Grim was the first DLC pack, right? Like yeah. that whole carnival yeah. element. So, so basically Grim is a higher being in service of the nightmare heart, which is like the high, the thing that makes up the nightmare dream. And right. the nightmare dream is weird because it's somehow been separated from, from the rest of the dream realms. We don't get a lot of elaboration on that. Yeah, maybe that's something that but, could easily fit into a sequel. But I can tell that. you, the Nightmare Heart basically sustains itself by sending followers out to kingdoms, waiting for those kingdoms to die, then gain summoned, and doing a ritual to gather whatever the flames of the dying kingdom are. I don't ah, know Ah, so what that's what they're are. doing in Halloween. And then when it does that, basically the new uh, Grim eats the old Grim essentially in the ritual you're doing so you you participate you defeat grim and that basically is like gestating that a little grim kind of, child that follows yeah, it's you kind of like you having sex basically yeah i definitely got that from the subtext in in grim's yeah. stuff and i felt really weird about it because i'm like these are cartoon bugs my brain oh. should not even be going there Oh, also, some of the Grim followers are clearly puppets, but some are bugs that have gotten drawn in, and there's a way to uh, end Grim's storyline where you basically kill the Grim child and, like, stop the perpetuation. Oh, that's interesting. Um, that's... And, and one of those bugs gets released but has no memory of being in the Grim troop. Oh, interesting. Okay, so obviously none, none of this stuff is essential to enjoying the game because the combat no. is is definitely no. the reason and, and there is so much more i haven't talked there, about. there's so much more but we're trying to sort of give people what they sort of need because there were a lot of questions like even people who watched every stream had trouble following it yeah. do you oh. think that this is a feature of the game or do you think this is something the developers are going to make a little more clear in what's the sequel huh. called? that that's an excellent question actually with that it is hard to say because I can tell you one thing because you're playing Hornet, the main character has dialogue. Right. And, and she is sassy, by the way. It's great. Yeah. And it I, I mean, so great. I just but, um, wonder, and I'm going to drop a word that some people are going to not like. Um, if they're going to make the plot, like the lore, a little more accessible, easier to understand, or whether they're just gonna leave it as a nice to have because one of the things i like the game is there's so much open to your imagination and that i think was kind of the theme right you've got bretta in this like fan fiction reality and you've got all these little pocket dream realms where people quite frankly in a lot of ways seem happier than they are in yeah. their real life oh by the way it's thing you might notice a lot of the dream realms have void around the edges yeah, there's sort of a yeah. So around void it. has a presence in dreams too. Yeah, yeah. So you're which you're I not... mean you can tell because it freaking shows up in the dream to kill the radiance. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's actually surprising. The collector's yeah. really creepy, and then the the void left over from the Hollow Knight, and the void left over from 
the playable character teaming up to defeat the Radiance is one of the most violent parts in the whole game. As well as the rest of the Void. Like yeah. Like, all of the rest of the Void. So, uh, thing about the Collector, the Collector seems to be basically an early experiment in making a Void creature to do, uh, do the King's Bidding. Oh, something I didn't get to in the war, by the way. So, after, like, Hera deal made, uh, trade happens, or maybe the Weavers are just sending silk to the king. Right. And that gets used for parchment and for spells. So, ba- yes. basically, the collector was made without any shell to, like, contain it and help it keep its form. And there was a spell in place to oh, give it orders okay. to... Okay. That explains so, why they want to put everything yeah. in a jar. So, it... Its purpose seems to have actually been putting grubs in jars based on a spell you can find in its room made out of silk, but it seems to have broken down and kind of just started doing its own thing. All right, awesome. Cloudcraft, thanks so much for your time. We have to stop here because that's all we can get into. That's um, unfortunate. Yeah, because there's so much more. But thanks very much for answering some of my questions. I'm sure viewers as well wanted the wanted these details as well because a lot of people like huh what's this so this guys is done for the people who watch twitch and we're left with unanswered questions these are your answered questions okay last thing crowd cloudcraft what's the last thing you want people to know about the game as a huge fan of it oh god yeah pick one just drop that bombshell on me yeah pick one um there are a lot of different routes you can take through this game. It is very, very open-ended. Like, if you play it on your own, you will have a very different route to Liana's route, if you've watched. So it is oh, well yeah. worth playing. Yeah, the, the, the number of people in the chat who said, wow, I haven't even been here, or I did this a totally different way, I think that's a mark of a good game, that there are many different ways to get certain places and they're not they're not errors they're not glitches they're not cheeses they're just that's the way the game's designed oh also i will if people have additional questions try to answer them in the comments of the video awesome okay so ask away guys ask for your ask your questions cloudcraft thanks very much welcome